the research that I've been working on for many years is studying the chemistry of molecules called porphyrins. A porphyrin is a donut shaped molecule. So it's a molecule in a ring shape. The ring contains 20 carbons and four nitrogens and they're held together with covalent bonds. It's pretty much the same color as blood and that's because porphyrins are the molecules that give blood their red color. What lives in that hole in the middle is iron. It's a single iron atom. So although iron is a metal, in this example, it's not participating in metallic bonding, which occurs when you've got a whole ensemble of metal atoms. It's a single metal atom that actually forms covalent bonds to the four nitrogen atoms. It's, it's the part of him that you know, carries oxygen, and in the gap above the iron atom, that's where it, it couldn't bonds to oxygen. The thing that most people can kind of grab onto is that you've got iron and oxygen and water, and that usually gives rust, but how come our blood doesn't rust? And it's because iron and oxygen in water, just iron and air, forms really strong bonds with oxygen. And so it kind of goes energetically all the way downhill to rust, and it's a one-way chemical reaction. But the really important thing about hemoglobin, the iron in hemoglobin sitting in the middle of the porphyrin, is that the porphyrin and the protein that wraps around it um, changes the interaction between iron and oxygen. So iron forms a much weaker bond with oxygen. So just strong enough to hang on while it transports around your body, but at the same time um, weak enough that when it gets to your tissues, um, it can fall off. That donut shape, that's actually the bright red color of blood, blood comes from that donut shape. And if you take that same donut shape and just modify it a little bit, change a little bit of the bonding between some of the carbon atoms um, and take out iron and put in magnesium, instead of being red, it's green. And that's the pigment in chlorophyll. So then it does something completely different. It, it uses the green color to absorb sunlight energy um, and, and what it does is it absorbs the energy and then it's the first step in a whole chain that passes that energy along to drive photosynthesis because both of those molecules are sort of donut shaped and brightly colored. So if we can use their capability to either change the chemistry of the metal iron that sits in the middle, like we do in hemoglobin with iron, or use the, the fact that they're brightly colored, which means they're really good at absorbing light energy, if we can harness those um, properties, then we can use them, for example, in light harvesting systems to make a new kind of, you know, photochemical cell. Um, they're donut shaped, so they they that you can lie them on surfaces, um, or you can stack them up. Um, we know in hemoglobin that the porphyrin tucks inside a little pocket in a protein, but we can design other little pockets that the porphyrin will tuck inside. So. I don't actually stu study stuff to do with blood. I study the way in which that molecule has special properties. And as an example, uh, there's a very closely related molecule. If we cut it in half and put a boron atom, then we make something that fluoresces bright green. And so we figured out a way to attach that directly to a sugar so we can make sugars light up. We can make sugars glow. The other thing about those porphyrin molecules, again, the red ones, is we know they're brightly colored, which means they're really good at absorbing light energy. So we've also had a project where we put them on surfaces and then we use them to um, absorb some light energy and transmit that energy to the surface um, and then in the presence of a gas molecule, like say a contaminant that you might want to measure in the air, like nitrogen oxides, if there's a gas molecule in the air that interacts with the porphyrin on the surface, it will change the interaction with the surface in a way that we can measure. So we can use that same molecule uh, in a gas sensing system.